For many people, the eve of a World Cup final would mean a sleepless night. But in 2006, this wasn't the case for Italian coach Marcello Lippi. I always slept well. I would smoke my cigar on the terrace and then go to bed. I had no problems, so there was a great sense of calm. The Italians could be forgiven pre-match nerves. Some of the squad weren't so calm. There were some players, like Pirlo, who you'd ask, did you get any sleep? And he'd reply, of course, I slept very well. But he was always incredibly calm. Others, like Buffon and Gattuso, spent the night smoking a couple of cigarettes because they couldn't sleep. But none of that had any effect on the pitch. The final against France was a tetchy encounter. Normal time was followed by an extra 30 minutes and then the tension of penalties. The only player who missed his penalty was Trezeguet. As Trezeguet composed himself for his spot kick, Lippi thought back to their time at Juventus and in particular the penalty shootout against AC Milan in the Champions League final of 2003. When he was walking up to take it, I was thinking back to the penalty he missed in Manchester. I looked at him with my arms folded and I said to myself, you owe me. And he missed. Cool heads had played a major part in Italy's progress. Before their final group match against the Czech Republic, Lippi recalls a focused squad. Usually the coach has to say to the players, look lads, this match is important because if we win, we might avoid this team or that team. Instead, in the evening, two days before the match, I came across them discussing these things amongst themselves, saying, lads, this is an important match. We won't have to play Brazil if we win and finish top of the group. They had looked at the different factors and results to discover we'd be able to go right through to a semi-final against Germany, facing smaller teams along the way. I felt that level of mental participation was very positive. Italy did top the group, and Lippi began to notice a further quality that made his job easier. There was a great sense of participation and fantastic desire from everyone. There was never a hint of trouble from anyone. I'd say to Totti, I'm resting you today, and he'd respond, no problem, coach, I'm at your disposal. Or Tony, I'm playing Giladino today, no problem, coach. If there were even one or two who'd want to be the stars and do everything themselves, you don't win a thing. That was a fantastic feeling for me. Following knockout wins over Australia and Ukraine, Italy faced a semi-final against the tournament hosts and favourites, Germany, in the stronghold of Dortmund. In the history of the national team, Germany had never lost a match in Dortmund, never. Out of 75,000 spectators, there were 70,000 Germans and 5,000 Italians. As soon as any Italians spoke, they'd tell them to be quiet. We went out onto the pitch and produced a great performance showing fantastic personality and authority. In extra time, with the match goalless, Italy's coach rolled the dice, playing with four forwards, confident the Germans would not break down his rock-solid back four. There was nothing happening in the midfield anymore. It had become a game of defence versus attack. At that point, our defence was letting absolutely nothing through. Not even a tiny speck would have got through. Buffon, Zambrotta, Cannavaro, Materazzi, Grosso, protected by Gattuso in front. Nothing was getting through. If you remember, in extra time, we hit the post through Giladino and the crossbar through Zambrotta from a corner. So we had two or three chances. It was then that I started to believe we would win the World Cup. Italy beat Germany 2-0 and Lippi remained convinced even when fate seemed to be against him, as penalties loomed in the final. La France, France had beaten us in 98 on penalties, not all that deservingly. Then they beat us in the European Championship final in Holland, equalizing 10 seconds before the end of normal time. Not 10 minutes, but 10 seconds from the end, after we'd led 1-0 and had thoroughly deserved to win. Then they beat us through Trezeguet's golden goal. I said, it can't be like that. This time, it's our turn. This time, we're going to win. I was sure. And so it proved. Even in the ecstasy of victory, Lippi's cool head remained. When we won the Champions League after beating Ajax in Rome, 
I took my glasses off, put them in my breast pocket, and started to run towards the players. As I was running, the glasses fell out and got trodden on. This was back in 1996. But when Grosso scored the penalty which made us world champions, I turned to the bench, took off my glasses, picked up the pouch, undid the zip, put the glasses inside, zipped it up again, turned around and started to celebrate. It seems impossible. Everyone asks me now why I did it, and I tell them that it was to save my glasses. And now they're in the FIFA Museum. Those famous glasses.